Going strong, yeah, I've been moving mountains, mountains. Circle tight and ain't no way around it, round it. Other shorties mad at What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe because you know the vibes. Welcome back to the mental health series, faith-based series, where I just talk about motivational, inspirational content, and also talk about faith and try to help you build your relationship with God while we do this together, just, you know, getting closer to God on a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Him. Um, today, I just want to talk about a few scriptures. I think I'm going to stick to Matthew and Luke in this, but you know, the spirit goes where it goes, so... We just gonna go with the flow but first i want to talk about matthew and this is when jesus predicts peter's denial even when we do not plan to sin like god still knows sometimes when we're gonna get off the path like god knows he already he knows the beginning to the end so sometimes when we don't even though we don't plan to turn from god like we none of us are just really sitting there like oh i'm about to do this well some people are and if we are then we definitely need to check ourselves um <laughs> feed our spirit a little bit more but most of the time when you're you know really on your journey and you're trying to push through and all that you're not really planning to turn away from God but you know God he always allows us to come back and this is also why you know he sacrificed his son for us so we can get that grace we're forgiven for our sins and we can have that relationship with him and we're able to have the holy spirit and all of these things even some of his disciples denied him and they were forgiven um so i just want to talk about that scripture matthew 26 verse 31 then jesus told them this very night you will all fall away on account of me for it is written i will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered but after i have risen i will go ahead of you peter replied even if all fall away on account of you i never will Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Not only does Jesus know that he's going to disown him, he knows the moment. He knows the mark. So he knows. Like, don't ever try to play a trick on God, on Jesus. Like, don't do that. It's not going to work. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. And then I want to fast forward to Matthew 26, verse 56. And that, well, I'm going to start 55. In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. That's the part that I kind of want to zone in on. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. So his disciples actually did leave him. They disowned him, and they fled. But later on like jesus forgives them for this like he already knew that it would happen though and this is the same thing with us like a lot of times we flee from god we leave and it's like god already knows what we're gonna do but he always welcomes us back we had that grace each and every day make sure you ask for forgiveness repent of your sins and just ask god to create in you a clean spirit and a a new heart and just feed your spirit every day that's my main thing with all of this when i tell y'all feed your spirit every day be in that word every day and god will slowly start to change you inside out just do not let shame and like regret and all of that stuff like drown you and make you like completely get off your path with god like god is always like welcoming you back with open arms so just remember that and just know that like the condemnation that's from the enemy you know god will convict us of things but he won't condemn us and make us get into like a deep depression about our our past actions you know and the things that we've done that have gotten off that have gotten us off of our path with the lord so this is very deep to me this particular story i don't know i was just reading it one night and i was just like wow like the enemy sometimes just has our mind it's it starts in the mind i believe so like when your thoughts are negative or you're going through certain things in your mind and your mind is telling you this that and the third that's gonna start to follow through with your actions that's gonna lead into having bad actions and doing things that you know are fleshly things like fleshly actions instead of probably spirit-filled actions which we should be doing things you know from the spirit luke chapter 8 and i'm gonna start with verse 27 i'm just gonna read until so you can get the gist of the story when jesus stepped ashore he was met by a demon possessed man from the town for a long time this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house but had lived in the tombs when he saw jesus he cried out and fell at his feet 
shouting at the top of his voice, what do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, what is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him, and they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Now that's crazy. It literally sits there and says, when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind literally like sometimes the enemy demons just has our mind and you have to recognize that like it's not you sometimes it's not you sometimes it's the things you allow to access to you and that's why it's very important to not let everybody have access to you it's important to truly fill your spirit with things of god whether that's the sermons whether that's you know Christian influencers that, you know, using your discernment, you feel like they're helping you with your walk with God, whether that's always reading the word, worship music, things like that, not putting it in your spirit, things that will, you know, take you away from God. If it's something that's turning you away from God, it's probably not, it's most definitely not something that you need to be, you know, intaking into your, your mind or whatever. So you really just have to keep that in mind. Like it's okay to set boundaries because not everything is for us. You know, you might hurt a few feelings along the way, but just know when you choose the things of God, it's never going to lead you on the wrong path. It's always going to get you, you know, one step closer to where you need to be on this walk with God. But when you're feeding into the things of the world or people that may be like coercing you, like, you know, tempting you into sin, those are not the people for you. That's not the crowd for you. So... Just know you can't let everything and everybody have access to you. Sometimes the enemy just has our mind. You know, we need Jesus. All of us need Jesus. And that's heavy right there. Um, that's the message. Like, I really can't go in any more than what I just did with that message. Like, that was a good one. That was a really good one. So whenever they say, you know, I understand why people don't want to listen to secular music, that's a huge topic, and there's a lot of debate on that. Like, if you feel like secular music or something that you're listening to is causing you to sin or tempting you to do this or tempting you to do that, use your discernment, cut it off. Listen to something that's going to fill your spirit with, you know, the good things of God, like the godly things. Hey, I hope these messages are helping y'all out. Make sure you share them to anybody that you feel needs this word or needs this message. Um, just, you know, keep walking with God. If you miss a day of your, your Bible reading, don't just say, forget this. Like, you know, when we get on a diet or whatever, <laughs> like Monday, we supposed to start. And then let's just say Monday we ate a donut and we weren't supposed to. And then we're just like, oh, I'll start next week. Don't do that with God. Please don't. I mean, you shouldn't do that with your diet either. You should keep going from that point on, like in the right direction. But just know that like God's not mad and he's not upset if we miss a day or we don't do something perfectly or whatever, you know, just pick up your cross and keep going. It's about not giving up. That's the main thing I'm living by right now is if you did not give up, you're still in the race. Like you're not a loser. You're a winner if you're, you're still going. So keep going, keep flowing, pray, stay in communication with other followers of Christ. Yeah that's the word and like some of like if you guys want i don't know everybody use your own discernment about who you listen to but i'm gonna tell you one of the last messages the last sermon that i just actually read which was crazy because i was already reading luke y'all and then i get on youtube and then the sermon it pops up from two days ago if you've been in a car accident it pops up from two days ago hazardous conditions 
by Sarah Jakes Roberts, Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts. It's on TD Jakes YouTube channel, but this is definitely a good one right here. Um, go watch that, y'all. I don't know if y'all can see it, but go watch this sermon. It is a good one. I listened to it before my workout this morning, and it was really good. It was just crazy because she started reading in Luke chapter 10, and I had just literally finished reading that the day before so it's crazy how god works but yeah y'all just don't give up and keep going i'm gonna end this right here love you guys make sure i have a blessed day make sure you like comment and subscribe because you know the vibes put your post bell notifications on please do that thank you god bless but i don't really care nothing about it about it i do it now nah, i ain't new to this got everybody asking questions they like who this is and baby i already know